breaking laws from people from Jesus Christ to Nelson Mandela, from Rosa Parks to Martin Luther King. Laws have always been broken to facilitate substantive change. Today's speaker holds a BA in journalism from Oakland University and a radio broadcasting degree from Spex Howard School of Broadcast Arts. Gary Yarofsky has already experienced more than many people will ever want to in a lifetime. He's been arrested more than 10 times and spent 77 days at a maximum security detention center, all in the name of animal rights. Gary has lectured in hundreds of schools nationwide, including the University of Connecticut, Michigan State, and Bowling Green. Author Charlotte Montgomery even included a chapter about Gary in her book, Blood Relations. Please welcome national lecturer Gary Yarofsky. in case you want to contact me later on. Today we're going to talk about the world's forgotten victims, animals, and the world's oldest and strongest addiction, meat. I'm going to challenge your belief systems today so certain parts of the speech will be intense, but let me start with a quick disclaimer. I am not here to be your enemy. The views expressed today do not necessarily reflect the views of your professor or this institution. I am not trying to take you away from your religion. No religion mandates meat eating. The golden rule states, do unto others as you would have done unto yourself. Animals qualify as others. And thou shalt not kill. The four most important yet most ignored words in all religious teachings. There's not an asterisk next to that commandment saying, unless you walk on all fours, have fur, feathers, horns, beaks, or gills. You can keep your friends, your politics, and your patriotism. Still watch your favorite TV shows and listen to your favorite music, even if it's Ted Nugent. I'll be making some sarcastic yet truthful comments throughout the speech. Please feel free to laugh while I'm being sarcastic. Just don't laugh during the serious parts. Now I'm going to speak for around 65, maybe 70 minutes, but then we'll do a Q&A session after for about a half an hour, so hold your questions until then. In the meantime, I have some rhetorical questions for you. Is slavery, owner, victim, profit, domination, exclusive to the human race? Have blacks, Jews, women, and children been the only victims of this atrocity? Have not cows been enslaved? What about pigs, chickens, turkeys, fish, sheep? If they're not enslaved, then what are they? Free? Can slavery have a victim that is neither human nor animal? Have not the oceans, the forests, the earth itself become victims of ownership too? And what about a slaughterhouse? House of slaughter. Slaughterhouse. Do you really think there's such a thing as humane slaughter? Exactly what is your definition of humane? Besides psychological and physical abuse, torture, dismemberment, and murder, what else do you think happens to animals inside of a slaughterhouse? You think they get belly rubs and tushy slaps? And if you think there's such a thing as humane slaughter, I'm curious, do you also think there's such a thing as humane rape? Humane child molestation? Humane slavery? How about a humane holocaust? In fact, what is your definition of a holocaust? Is it a massacre of human beings? or a massacre of innocent beings. I thought it was innocent, which brings us to the biggest Holocaust massacre of all. Every year in America, without mercy, we murder 10 billion land animals and 18 billion marine animals. Not for health, survival, sustenance, or self-defense. People eat meat, cheese, milk, and eggs for four reasons. Habit, tradition, convenience, taste. 
I want to define a word that might be new to some people right now, and it's vegan. It's up there on the screen, V-E-G-A-N. Vegans, like vegetarians, do not consume the meat of any land or marine animal. Vegans, however, unlike vegetarians, also refrain from eating cheese, milk, eggs, honey, or any animal product whatsoever. We also don't wear animal skins, no fur, leather, wool, silk, or down. Now, I want to let you all know that I was not raised vegan. I ate meat, cheese, milk, and eggs for around 25 years. I used to wear leather shoes and belts and jackets like everyone else. In fact, around 20 years ago, I even owned a fur coat. Needless to say, I understand your lifestyle. It used to be mine. And for people involved in politics, let's get this out of the way right now. I am not a Democrat, an anarchist, or some hippie with a closet full of tie-dye shirts. I'm not a Republican, a socialist, or a fascist. I'm an activist. Root word is active. I've been banned from five countries so far and arrested 13 times for random acts of kindness and compassion on behalf of my animal brothers and sisters. If you want to read up about that, check out my website. And today, I would love to give you a chance to actually do something and truly get involved. Because I understand a lot of people want to get involved. Honestly, I do. But putting a coexist bumper sticker on your car, wearing a What Would Jesus Do bracelet, or sporting a Peace and Love and Sunshine t-shirt, that is not getting involved. I understand that we're all on a journey in life. We all have different likes and dislikes, different nationalities and religions too. But there's one thing that we need to have in common with each other, and that's peace. Genuine compassion and genuine peace for our planetary companions. Contrary to political and religious dogma, animals do not belong to us. They are not commodities. They're not property and they're not inanimate, stupid objects who can't think and feel. That Descartes Cartesian way of looking at animals like they're machines, it is outdated and quite frankly, 100% insane. Because if we all understand that animals can use their eyes to see, ears to hear, noses to smell, mouths to eat, legs to walk, feathers to fly, fins to swim, genitalia to procreate, bowels to defecate, I'm always perplexed that most people don't believe that they can also use their brains to think, feel, be rational, be aware, and be self-aware. Am I supposed to believe that every body part on an animal functions just like it's supposed to? Except the brain? Those lies are thick. The propaganda from the animal abusers is enormous. I mean, when was the last time you turned on TV and saw a commercial for shiitake mushrooms? People singing and dancing down the streets, having a good time, eating mushrooms. How about alfalfa sprouts? Quinoa. It's a seed. Radishes. Raspberries. Tofu. You don't see that stuff advertised on TV. What do you see instead? Have some more meat. Have some more cheese. Have some more cheese on your meat. Meat, cheese, double cheese, extra cheese. And how about a little more cheese with your meat? Have some more cow's milk, have some more eggs. And then what do you see interspersed between those advertisements? Not feeling so well? Need to see a cancer specialist? How about a heart doctor? Need some Lipitor, Zocor, Crestor, Plavix? Need some diet pills? How about some energy drinks? Some KO Pectate? Tums? Pepto Bismol? You've been duped. They're killing you, they're killing the animals, and they're killing this planet. And those blinders are on nice and tight. But if you give me an open mind today, that's all I ask for, an open mind, I'm going to take your blinders right off. 
My goal is simple. All I want to do is reconnect people with animals. Awaken some emotions and some feelings and some logic that has been buried and suppressed intentionally by our society. And the reason why I say reconnect, it's because each and every person in this room used to be a real animal rights person at one time, a true animal lover, and a real friend of the animal kingdom. And it's when we were kids. When we were young, when we were kids, man, we used to be in awe of animals. They used to make us laugh and giggle and smile. They made us pretty happy. And there was a time in our lives when we would do just about anything in the world to make them happy as well to protect them from cruelty, or to at least acknowledge the cruelty they were receiving. I mean, if somebody was mean to an animal in front of us when we were little, we would have screamed and cried. And that's because we all used to understand right from wrong when it came to the treatment of animals, until somebody told us and taught us differently. You better believe somebody told us to ignore their suffering to mock and excuse their pain and their misery, to make fun of their very existence. And this is something I want you to focus on today, tomorrow, and beyond. What in the hell happened along the way? Who taught us to be so mean and nasty and vicious and hateful or indifferent towards animals when they used to be our friends? These are innocent beings who have done nothing wrong to us. Because I'm pretty sure we can all agree in at least one thing right now, that hatred, in its purest form, is a learned behavior. Racism, sexism, heterosexism, anti-Semitism, misogyny, these are all learned behaviors. When kids are two, three, four years old playing on a playground, they could care less about the color of their friend's skin or their religious background. I don't think there's any doubt that hatred in its purest form is learned. So speciesism is no different. This could be a new word to a lot of people. It's up here on the screen, right below vegan. It's the word species with an ism attached to it. And I want to define this word as the unethical, unprincipled point of view that the human species has every right to exploit, enslave, and murder another species. And all because we believe that our species is so more special, so more superior than the other ones. We're the only ones that count, and we're the only ones that matter. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but that line of thinking, that thought process, that is the basis of all forms of discrimination. One group saying and thinking they're more special than everyone else and they proceed to exploit them, oppress them, denying them their right to be free. They treat them like property. They enslave them in many cases. And in many other cases, they murder them with premeditation and without penalty. And understand something essential about discrimination. It is never okay to be picking and choosing which forms of discrimination to be opposed to. Which ones to say are evil, racism, and which ones to say are okay, speciesism. Discrimination is evil on its foundation, or it's not. You cannot have this one both ways. It doesn't work like that. I want to ask you to use some empathy right now. And when I say empathy, what I'm saying is, is place yourself in the position of the animals and start to view this issue from the animal's point of view, from the victim's point of view. When you examine any form of injustice, whether humans are victims or animals are victims, please remember the victim's point of view. If you are not the victim, don't examine it entirely from your point of view, because when you're not the victim, it becomes pretty easy to rationalize and excuse cruelty. Injustice, inequality, slavery, and even murder. But when you're the victim, things look a lot differently from that end. <coughs> now I want to show a graphic four minute video right now about what goes on inside of a slaughterhouse. 
I want to ask you not to turn away, not to close your eyes during this video. It's because if you choose to eat meat, cheese, milk, and eggs, I think at the very least you are obligated to see the pain and suffering you are causing. But if you do feel the need to turn away or close your eyes during this video, you might want to ask yourself a question. If it's not good enough for my eyes, then why is it good enough for my stomach? Do you ever wonder why McDonald's and Burger King and Wendy's never show you those images in their TV ads? Instead they show you smiling cartoon caricatures of animals singing and dancing and playing, lying to you, brainwashing you, programming you not to care about things you would normally care about, things that you used to care about. Right now, at 
this very moment, on American highways, there are no less than 5,000 concentration camp trucks. Trucks that we've constructed. Inside these trucks, there are living, terrified, innocent beings. Cows and pigs and chickens. These trucks are being driven to concentration camp slaughterhouses that we've carefully constructed all across America. When the trucks arrive, the animals are so frightened, they won't even get off the truck. They're not stupid. They know what's next. So people go on the trucks with electric prods and force them to walk down the chutes to their own death. Or if the animals are small enough to manhandle like chickens, We'll just grab them off the trucks and toss them inside. Inside, these innocent living beings are hanged upside down, fully conscious. In other words, they go in alive against their will and come out chopped up into hundreds of pieces. But do you know what's more insane than that? Meat eaters walking around like their lifestyle isn't causing any harm. Like it's normal and natural to be consuming violence and death. How would you feel if the day that you were born, somebody else had already planned the day of your execution? That's what it's like to be a cow, a pig, a chicken, or a turkey on this planet. I, th I think this type of behavior is inexcusable and unbecoming of a species that claims to understand right from wrong. The animals have not done one single thing to us to deserve the wrath and the cruelty that we hurl on them. And I hope you all understand what I'm offering you today. When you hit the door after my speech, are you aware that for the first time ever, you can now directly participate in ending a massacre instead of sitting around and paying lip service to all the massacres and all the problems that are always going on on this planet. What is so frustrating to me when I travel this country doing around 250 lectures every year to some 7,500 students is that everybody talks a good game. I've noticed that people are quite the smooth talkers when it comes to peace and compassion. I mean, people always want to tell me, never show me, just tell me how peaceful they are because of what they believe in or what makes them sad. Hey, Gary, I believe in God and I believe in angels and I pray all the time. And those earthquakes, the one in Chile and Haiti, oh, that was so sad. And no shit, it was sad. Since when does feeling sad about an obvious tragedy or believing in something make the world a better place or make somebody a good person? And listen, folks, I am not trying to dog you out when I talk like this. I'm not. I'm just not a politician. I'm not a bullshit artist. I don't know how to schmooze people, as you can see. It's kind of beyond me. I hope you appreciate my honesty and my genuineness today. And I'm not a salesperson. I got no books to sell you after my lecture. No DVDs and no documentaries. No collection plate going around. I don't want your money. I don't want your email addresses and I don't want your mailing addresses. Keep all that stuff. I am here to talk about the worst form of cruelty and violence taking place on this planet, even though most people don't seem to care about it. But when you sit back in the comfort of your living room and you start condemning atrocities elsewhere, that is pure, unadulterated lip service. That's the definition of lip service. But veganism, this is now a chance to actually walk the compassionate talk that everybody's always talking about. This is your chance to show others how truly peaceful you are. This is a chance for a personal revolution, to leave your mark on this planet by causing the least amount of harm possible, always being vegan. Now come on, what's the argument for not causing the least amount of harm? Inconvenience? Indifference? Apathy? 
selfishness. I want you to know, I don't live in fantasy land. I'm well aware that animals are suffering and dying just because we're here on the planet with them. We build homes through their habitat. We pollute their environment, destroy their habitat. Is there a reason we have to maximize the suffering and maximize the cruelty and the death that they already endure by eating them on top of it all? You want to talk about pouring salt into somebody else's womb. 98%, and I repeat this stat, 98% of animals who are abused and killed on this planet are abused and killed by the meat, dairy, and egg industries. This is where all the harm is taking place. And in America, from birth until death, each meat eater consumes around 3,000 land animals and thousands of other marine animals. Those are USDA stats. And I seem to think a lot of people eat animals because we've all been told that humans are carnivores, we're omnivores, we're meat eaters, and we're supposed to be doing this. Are you aware that physiologically, the human body is actually 100% herbivorous? Plant eaters. The length of our intestines are somewhere between 7 to 13 times the length of our torso, our trunk. That's the same length of all herbivore animal intestines on this planet. They're very long. But the length of the intestines on real meat eaters, hyenas, coyotes, bears, tigers, and lions, only three to six times the length of their torso. They have a short intestinal tract so they can push through quickly decaying and rotting animal flesh, animal protein, cholesterol, saturated fat, trans fatty acids. <coughs> which is why it is impossible, I repeat, impossible for any genuine meat eater to ever clog their arteries. Never happens to a real meat eater. What's the number one killer of humans who choose to eat meat, cheese, milk, and egg? Heart disease from clogged arteries, atherosclerosis. Humans and other herbivores, we sweat through our pores to cool ourselves. We don't pant like dogs and cats and lions to cool ourselves down. No claws on the human hand. Claws are a trademark of the carnivore and the omnivore. We have carbohydrate digestive enzymes in our saliva. <coughs> Only herbivores possess that, meaning we're supposed to be eating tons of carbohydrates like fruits and vegetables. Our teeth, broad, short, blunt, flat just like the teeth of other herbivores. And before somebody blurts out, hey Gary, what about these canines, dog? Most of the herbivores have canines, incisors, and molars. It would not be possible for them, for us, to be eating hard fruit like apples without those teeth. Our lower jaw goes from side to side in a grinding, chewing motion, like this. We grind and chew when we eat. If you grind and chew when you eat like you all do, you are an herbivore. The jaws of carnivores and omnivores can only go up and down, vertically, rip and swallow. There's no chewing, grinding, side to side action. And I'm a fair guy. I mean, if somebody out there truly believes that humans are meat eaters, I'll give you two challenges to prove me wrong after class, and please do so if you want. I want you to go outside and locate a squirrel on campus. And when you spot that squirrel, put that carnivore speed into effect that everybody has and chase that squirrel down, pounce on him, and catch him in your mouth. No tools, no weapons, no cages. No one's allowed to be a cheater and a fake carnivore with this challenge. And when you are done killing the squirrel in your mouth, be my guest. Eat the squirrel. Eyes, nose, face, toes, tail, anus, inner organs, blood, fur, and don't forget about the brain. You don't get to pick and choose which body parts you want to eat, and you don't get to cook it either. If people want to be real meat eaters, I'd love to see people eat raw flesh from the bone down to the bone with nothing left but the bones day after day after day. And challenge number two, find a two-year-old child. Place the child in a crib. In the crib, put two things, a live bunny rabbit and an apple. If the child eats the bunny rabbit and plays with the apple, send me an email. Would you let me know? Because I'm going to come back and buy everyone in this room a brand new car if that happens. 
Benzes and Beamers, leather interior too. In fact, next time I'm at Georgia Tech, if that happens, I will eat a steak sandwich in front of everybody, chase it down with a chili dog with extra cheese, a bucket of ice cream, and a bag of beef jerky too. And I'll take the jerky and I'll dip it in the ice cream and eat it like that. Now I would not hold my breath on these promises, not that I won't fulfill them, I'm a man of my word, but those things cannot and will not be happening because humans also possess zero carnivorous instincts. Zero omnivorous instincts when we're born young and growing up. We're all born vegan. We just acquire a taste for meat, cheese, milk, and eggs after they're forced down our throats during childhood. Now, all I'm asking you to do is something normal and natural anyways. Eat what comes from the earth. Every vitamin, mineral, and nutrient that exists, protein, calcium, iron, potassium, all the B vitamins, they have an original source and it ain't the animals. You are aware that people eat animals after the animals have already eaten from the earth. People eat cows after the cows eat up the grass, some of the soil. Then we ship them to a feedlot, feed them most of our corn, wheat, oats, and soy. Then we take more of the corn, wheat, oats, and soy, shove it down the throats of pigs and chickens and turkeys. Stop filtering your nutrients through somebody else's body. It's illogical and irrational. Go to those sources directly, fruits. Vegetables, nuts, seeds, grains, legumes, these things cannot harm you, cannot cause a disease, and more importantly, they harm no one else in the process. But when we consume what walks, what flies, and what swims, that is abnormal. Where does everybody think diseases come from? Broccoli? Asparagus, kale, collard greens, blueberries, raspberries, strawberries, peaches, nectarines, grapes, bananas, avocados, onions, tomatoes, cucumbers, spinach. And in case anyone's wondering about those pesky little E. coli salmonella contaminations a couple times a year with the vegetables, let's keep in mind the one and only source of E. coli and salmonella, shit. Human shit or animal shit. Spinach doesn't shit. <laughs> Broccoli doesn't shit. Peanuts don't shit. Let's stop blaming the plant products when there's an E. coli salmonella contamination. That's the fault of a meat-eating society. Why? Well, meat-eaters want billions of land animals to eat, so we have to mass-produce billions of land animals. Keep in mind, this has nothing to do with God, nothing to do with evolution anymore. This is a business. This is Smithfield, ConAgra, Purdue, Tyson, McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy's, KFC. That's why we have animal agriculture classes in college. So when we mass produce billions of land animals, they have trillions of tons of manure. That stuff gets in the waterways, and then there's runoff onto the crops, or they're putting feces contaminated water directly onto the crops. But all of our main diseases, heart diseases, heart attacks and strokes, most of the cancers, prostate cancer, colon cancer, breast cancer, pancreatic cancer, ovarian cancer, kidney disease, diabetes, osteoporosis, high blood pressure, obesity, asthma, four main factors that cause them. Now I know about other factors. I'm not saying that you can't get sick elsewhere. Of course you can. Smoking, drinking, stress, <coughs> chemicals in the environment, high fructose corn syrup, Twinkies, I know about the other things that can lead to an ailment, but the four main factors are found inside of meat, cheese, milk, and eggs. Cholesterol, saturated fat, trans fatty acids, animal protein, and I repeat that last one that nobody wants to hear about, animal protein. But when you go vegan, did you know that you eliminate cholesterol entirely from your diet? You can only get cholesterol from meat, cheese, milk, and eggs. And your body makes cholesterol on its own. That's the only such thing as good cholesterol. If you bring it in from an outside source, it's automatically bad cholesterol. You can take out around 95% of saturated fat when you go vegan, and you can take out all the naturally occurring trans fatty acids too. Keep this in mind, between 2 to 9% of all meat and all dairy naturally comprised of trans fatty acids. 
And you can obviously take out all of animal protein. Now, animal protein is way too acidic for the human body. We don't process it properly. It is the main reason why one in three meat eaters continually get cancer. And it's one of the main causes of osteoporosis. Were you aware that when animal protein enters the human body, it makes our blood acidic instantaneously? But our blood can't stay acidic for long or else we die. So our body has to figure out instantly how to neutralize the acidity. I have some good news and some bad news. Let's start with the good. Our bodies have figured out how to neutralize the acidity. Bad news. There's only one way to make it happen at this point. With phosphate. There's only one source of phosphate in the human body. Bones. Just so you know, our bones are comprised of two things. Calcium <coughs> phosphate, and they're binded together. So our body leaches calcium phosphate out of the bones, takes the phosphate to neutralize the acidity, and then we pee out the calcium. This is why every single epidemiological study, those are the ones done on human populations, every single one shows that societies that consume the most amount of animal protein have the worst rates of osteoporosis, bone fractures, and cancers. While societies that consume little to no animal protein, the vegan and vegetarian ones, Hindus, Buddhists, Jains, Rastafarians, Seventh-day Adventists, have little to no rates of osteoporosis, bone fractures, and cancers. And so we don't get into a debate during Q&A about different medical studies that are out there. A lot of times when people know I'm coming to class in advance, well, they'll spend a few hours online looking up studies, print it out, wait for Q&A, and go, hey, Yurofsky, I got a study here that contradicted everything you told us today. What's up with that? Well, here's what's up with that. You don't need a medical study to show you what people are dying of. But for the record, every study you can produce showing that humans need meat, cheese, milk, and eggs, I'll produce two. Two to one ratio, showing that meat, cheese, milk, and eggs are responsible for every major disease. But we all know medical studies can be manipulated either way. So even though I got a heavy two to one edge on this, I say toss them all out because you don't need them. All you have to do is pay attention to this meat, cheese, milk, egg eating society that we all live in. So how many of your family members and your friends' family members have a disease already or have died already from a disease? Because I can't be the only one affected by this. My grandfather died from a heart attack. My grandma died from a stroke. My uncle Jack died from a heart attack. And last October on the 15th, I got a call around midnight that my father had just died from a heart attack. My mom, she's got asthma. My stepdad's got heart disease so badly he takes seven pills for breakfast. My best friend Darren, four of his aunts and uncles have died from diabetes. His ex-girlfriend Rita has breast cancer at 40 and she's dying. Just found out a few months ago that his current girlfriend Dion has ovarian cancer. And yesterday my girlfriend just found out that her father has prostate cancer. What's the one thing we all have in common with each other besides the air we breathe and the water we drink? Meat, cheese, milk, and eggs. Animal products all day long. And I know you can blame some of the cancers on environmental pollution. There's no doubt about that. But how are you going to blame heart attacks and strokes on environmental pollution? And diabetes, osteoporosis, obesity. Here, I'm going to break this down for you in a couple different ways today. I'll show you what's killing people. And I'm going to show you who's lying to you, too. Flat out, bold faced lies. Let's come to an agreement on the dairy industry. And let me know if I'm being unfair with this. I want to know. According to the dairy industry itself, the main reason they exist is so you can get calcium. Fair? Is that not their entire claim? Eat some cheese, drink some cow's milk, strong bones, strong body. Milk does a body good. Got milk? Check it out with the USDA in America. We consume the most amount of dairy on the planet. Right here. You can't even get a sandwich anymore without cheese. We put cheese in every nook and every cranny of every single food item. We put it inside the pizza crust now. We put cheese on top of salads too. You can't even get salad anymore without cheese. 
And if you'd like to find salad minus the cheese, what's the first thing people say to the waiter? Hey, uh, can I get some ranch or some Thousand Island? Can you pour some dairy on these vegetables for me? So in this society where everybody is hooked on cheese, I mean hooked like it's been laced with weed, crack, ecstasy, <laughs> morphine, and the antidote. Most people can't even fathom one meal, let alone one day or a lifetime without cheese. In fact, if you want to know why vegetarians never go vegan, Cheese. Cheese on a baked potato. Cheese on a broccoli. Cheese on everything in sight. Even lactose intolerant people eat cheese. And I don't care what anybody says about this, they might avoid straight up cow's milk, but slap a double cheese pepperoni pizza down in front of a lactose intolerant person, no hesitation, right down the hatch. So we got all these animal products coming into our diet. Do you ever wonder why there are no less than three TV commercials being run for calcium supplements? Actinel, Boniva, Citricat. You've got to be kidding me. Calcium supplements in America? How come there's osteoporosis at all? How come at the vitamin stores, I say plural stores, because when I travel the country, four meat eaters pull me aside all the time and say, Hey Gary, we eat meat because you get everything you need from meat. All the vitamins, all the minerals, all the nutrients. Well, how come in this meat, cheese, milk, egg eating society that we all live in, every city has not only one, but two, three, four, five, or six vitamin stores? How come Rite Aid, CVS, and Walgreens now have complete vitamin sections too? With a whole shelf devoted to calcium supplements. I thought everybody was getting calcium from the animal products. That's what the meat and dairy people said. Newsflash, you don't. Animal protein won't allow it. Animal protein makes your blood acidic, so your body takes calcium phosphate out of the bones. Phosphate to neutralize, calcium gets excreted through the urine. There are four commercials for fiber. Metamucil, Fibercon, FiberSure, and Betafiber. If people ate a friggin' apple or a pear once in a while, nobody would need help taking a shit. Now pay attention and look around and see what's going on. Now with all this being said, we've established the four reasons why people eat meat, cheese, milk, and eggs. No debating, no discussing it. Habit, tradition, convenience, tasty. Yeah, I know why people do it. I did it for 25 years myself. We don't do this to be ethical and stay healthy. That's obvious, and we don't do this to help the environment out either. Two quick things on the environment, and by the way, go to my website, click on all about veganism, click on the environment section. World hunger and environmental pollution. Root cause of world hunger, meat-eating societies. 65% of the world's grains are set aside every year to feed 53 billion land animals that are killed every year on this planet and tens of billions of marine animals. We got fish farms nowadays. Instead of using those crops for six and a half billion people. Do the math on this. You don't have to be Einstein to figure this equation out. And again, environmental pollution, air pollution, water pollution, deforestation, greenhouse gas emissions. Number one cause is animal agriculture. Now I want to get back to taste good though, because I think meat tastes great. It might shock you to hear me say that, but if you're doing some kind of extra credit essay on my speech and you want to quote me, quote me right now. I love the way meat tastes. Love it. Cheese. Love it. Cow's milk and eggs. Love it. Guilty as charged. I did not stop eating this stuff because of a taste issue. I stopped for ethics, morality, decency compassion to the animals that I share this planet with. But here's the coolest thing about being vegan in this day and age, it's never been easier. You can have the same smell, taste, and texture of meat, cheese, and milk without it. Nobody has to suffer and die for <coughs> dinner anymore, including you. They make all the products you like to eat in a vegan version. They make it from, from soy and wheat and rice and hemp. I want to show you some of the products that are out there, and I'm not receiving compensation from these companies. These are my selections of best tasting mock meat. I'm going to put them up on the screen so we can all see it clearly. If you guys like bacon, 
Light Life, Smart Bacon. Bacon made from soy. This company, Light Life, also makes smoky tempeh bacon. Now, tempeh is a fermented version of soy, so it tastes a little different than the other stuff, but keep in mind, I would not recommend products to you if they didn't taste fantastic. I am trying to win you over, so you go veg. I'm not showing you every product we have. Some of our products suck. I'm showing you the best of the best. And when I say some of our products suck, don't act like there aren't shitty Chinese restaurants, nasty pizza places, and disgusting hamburger joints, okay? It works both ways. If it's made great, no matter what it is, it tastes great. If not, it's going to stink. Light Life also has soy chicken strips and steak strips as well. They also have a full line of deli meats. Turkey, bologna, and ham. You cannot tell the difference by sight, taste, or texture. Small company called Melissa's has chorizo, vegan chorizo. Energy bars, like Cliff Bars, Luna Bars, and a new bar just came out called Pro Bar, might not have seen that one yet. They're all vegan, and many of the companies have a vegan energy bar as well. Now remember, when you go veg, you don't give up anything. You got the vegan version of stuff, or eat things that are truly natural, like fruits and vegetables, or beans and lentils. You like turkey? We got you covered. My favorite product, tofurkey. <laughs> Tofu turkey. Stuffing on the inside. Look, smells and tastes like turkey. You gotta slice it with a knife. But guess what? No turkey had to suffer and die for this. Tofurkey also has tofurkey slices. Six different flavors of tofurkey slices. Tofurkey also has tempeh strips. Remember I talked about the fake and bacon with light light tempeh? So they have some tempeh products too. Tofurkey also has Italian sausage beer brats, and there seems to be an addiction in our society for beef jerky. I don't know what the hell is going on with everybody's taste buds. Everybody's lost their minds, but we got you covered. Tofurkey jerky. Anything you're looking for, we've got that stuff veganized. And many other companies have a vegan jerky as well. The absolute best company on the market right now is It's All Good Gardein Protein. That is one of their chicken dishes. That is two of their chicken dishes. Three chicken dishes. They have more chicken dishes. They have steak dishes. And they just came out a few months ago with buffalo wings as well. Trader Joe's, that grocery chain, they want to compete now in the soy meat industry. They made their own brand of soy chicken and soy steak strips. There's a company called Vegetarian Plus, and they have vegan citrus spare ribs. And Garden Burger has had riblets, mock ribs, for over 10 years. I can't tell you how many of my meat-eating friends and family members I flat out fooled with this stuff. And this company also has shrimp, uh, kung pao chicken, orange chicken, and tuna rolls as well. Now I mentioned wheat meat earlier. I don't think people really understand what it is. There's actually a name for it. It's called Satan. Not Satan. Satan. <laughs> I want to give this stuff a try too. And they now have flavored seitan on the market too by Uptons, ground beef style, chorizo style, they also have an Italian sausage flavor as well. Another favorite company, Nate's Meatless Meatballs. Now, I know you guys have seen veggie burgers before, probably Boca, but if you don't like Boca, good news, there's Amy's, Morningstar Farms, Dr. Prager's, Sunshine Burgers, and Garden Burger, all the different taste and texture. If you're looking for no soy, different kind of mock meat in your diet, new company called Bahama Rice Burgers, burgers from rice. They also have sausage and meatballs made out of rice as well. Another company with a no soy, different kind of mock meat taste. A small company from Cincinnati called Five Star Foodies has artichoke burgers. My new favorite veggie burger by far, burgers from artichokes. They also have a harvest roast. It says vegetarian, but it is vegan. It's a fake turkey with fake skin around it, too. Now, Amy's is on the market. I know you've seen her stuff. She's got a ton of stuff. But keep in mind, most of her stuff is only vegetarian. Still has eggs and cheese and other uh, animal byproducts in there. But one of her vegan stuff, tofu scramblers, a fake egg. A hot pocket that actually tastes good and is good for you, too. Amy's also has rice macaroni with diet cheese, a brand new vegan cheese on the market. Diet cheese, which you can find in Whole Foods right now. Comes in two different flavors. A lot of people are going crazy for the diet cheese cheese. Uh, I still like Follow Your Heart, which has four different flavors of vegan cheese. Comes in a big block and it melts. Now sometimes you got to be creative with this stuff. Light Life also has <laughs> vegan pepperoni, which is ready to eat directly out of the bag. If you get some of this vegan pepperoni, 
Buy yourself a tofuti pan pizza with tofuti soy cheese on it. Tofuti also has cream cheese, sour cream, and ice cream as well. Before it goes in the oven or after it comes out of the oven, slap some pepperoni on there and you get out yourself a pizza. Remember, there's soy milk and rice milk, almond milk, hemp milk, coconut milk, oat milk, hazelnut milk, seven vegan milks on the market. There's soy ice cream, rice ice cream, almond ice cream, and coconut milk ice cream and ice cream bars by So Delicious. And let me just say this, you have never in your life had ice cream. So you've had the coconut milk ice cream by So Delicious. If you go to my website and click on Bed Shopping Guide, I have taste tested everything for you in advance. Check out the brand names I recommend. I can assure you, I eat nothing nasty. And what about ethnic food? Indian food, Middle Eastern food, Mexican food, plenty of veggie options there. Italian food, pasta and spaghetti. And a real pasta, real spaghetti, just like bread, never requires animal products. Now, unfortunately, we've defiled these products, so you always have to ask or check out the ingredient list. But every Italian joint has at least one, if not two, or three of the genuine noodles, which are always vegan. And when it comes to the best bread around, Whole Foods, or Panera Bread, Brugger's Bagels, Einstein Bagels, 90% of those breads and bagels are always vegan. Uh, Asian food, Japanese food, Chinese food, Thai food, Korean food, Vietnamese food, all you have to do is substitute tofu for the meat in any of their dishes. Tell them to make it without fish sauce and you have a vegan meal. And soul food can be veganized as well. In fact, you guys are pretty lucky to be in Atlanta. You have two soul food restaurants owned by the same company, Soul Vegetarian, 10 minutes from campus. Vegan mac and cheese, collard greens, yams. They have something called a kale bone sandwich, which is a fake roast beef sandwich with cheese dripping off of it, too. You gotta check out Soul Vegetarian. And don't think, I don't watch your faces when I'm up here. How come when I talk about mock meat, I always catch a handful of people in every crowd, and we got a big crowd today, so I stopped counting at about eight or nine. How come there's always a handful of people that wrinkle up their noses, make big wide eyes, and start glancing at the people next to them across the aisle like, soy chicken, is this guy crazy? Soy bacon, he must be out of his mind. How come this stuff that is made of soy, wheat, vegetables, grains, and spices, no chemicals, Contrary to the lies being spread about these products by the meat and dairy industries, how come this stuff is considered gross to most people, but meat? Meat's got five components. Let me break it down for you. Blood, flesh, veins, muscles, and tendons. The cut-up corpse of a dismembered body. How does meat not qualify as gross and disgusting to everybody? How in the world is a beverage? A liquid that oozes out of the udders of cows, a secretion that drips from the mammary glands of another being that's loaded with pus, by the way. Oh yeah, let me tell you about the pus in your cow milk. It'd be my pleasure when you hook machines up to the udders of cows three times a day to suck them dry. Those machines cause massive amounts of infections on the inside and outside of the udder. Now let's add all the bovine growth hormone they put in cows to make sure they produce huge quantities of milk, which always leads to another infection. The machine doesn't know what not to suck out. Pus, mucus, and infections right in with your milk, and yeah, milk is pasteurized. But when did pasteurization become a removal process? It's a sanitation process. You're only sanitizing pus. And if you want to look this up online, well, you don't think the dairy industry would ever use the word pus when they write about this problem in their own trade journals. And yeah, they're going to deceive you again with this. Look up the scientific term for pus, somatic cell count. And by the way, our government, the USDA, they allow the dairy industry to have a maximum amount of one eyedropper full of pus in every glass of milk. Drink up. Oh, and by the way, while you're looking up that lie from the dairy industry and all the other ones, you might want to look up casomorphins. I got it up on both sides of the board. Remember that part in the speech earlier when I talked about people being hooked on cheese like it was laced with weed, crack, and morphine? Mother cows before birth produce a substance in their milk to make sure that the calf stays close. 
Actually, human women do this too. It's not morphine, but in cows, it is a version of morphine. Queso morphins. That's why people are so hooked on cheese. Got to have their daily fix of morphine. Does anybody know what an egg actually is from a hen? And don't say embryo or aborted fetus. Not even close. It's unfertilized, so it can't be either. Hen is a female, though. Unfertilized egg through a female system. It's part of her menstruation cycle. It's a hen's period. People scramble up hen periods in the morning, and all of a sudden, I'm weird because I don't make omelets anymore. And what about vomit? Oh, we're going to take those blinders off today. Come on, you guys love vomit. You adore it all over your food. Got to give this one a pretty name, though. No one's going to buy and eat vomit. Unless we call it honey instead. Honey comes directly from a bee's stomach. It is regurgitated right through a bee's mouth. Look it up with any wildlife biologist. But nobody wants to eat bee vomit nut Cheerios. We want honey nut Cheerios. So we hire ourselves to play euphemism games. The standard diet of a meat eater is blood, flesh, veins, muscles, tendons, cow secretions, hen periods, and bee vomit? Now we're not done yet. I am not going to let you off that easy while I got you here today. You know, we top this all off, in my opinion, because every November, during that certain holiday people love so much, people take a dead turkey, open up the dead turkey's ass, or carve out a really big hole in their ass, take some stuffing and shove it inside their dead empty ass, and use their little dead ass as an oven to bake some bread. Somebody else's dead, empty, bacteria-laden ass to make bread? Ass bread? <laughs> and people think vegans are weird? Because we eat tofu and rice and beans and lentils? I tell people one of my favorite meals nowadays. Yams. Boy, dish me up a plate of yams for dinner and I'm a happy guy. I know how most people are, though. I tell them this. They're like, but well, you just eat yams for dinner? I don't know, man, it's kind of weird. <laughs> okay. But somebody else's rib cage sitting on your plate isn't weird, doesn't make you think twice. Severed legs, sliced up thighs, and mutilated breasts sitting on your plate doesn't make you think twice. And you want to know why? Those blinders are on nice and tightly, aren't they? And I bet most of you were perturbed at me when the speech began, and I accused everybody of having blinders on. I am not here to be your enemy. I am here to call you out, though. You might have had a pretty good excuse before I got here of being uninformed and misinformed. Okay. That's fair. Honestly, well, I was the same way for a long time. I'm kind of curious, though. What's the excuse now? You got a choice today. When you leave this room, you can choose to be radically kind. Never to intentionally harm another animal for breakfast, lunch, or dinner ever again. And these creatures have never harmed you, violated you, or taken advantage of you in any way, shape, or form. The least you can do is return the favor. Or you can stay radically cruel. Keep the status quo as is. Make sure animals have no freedom. Make sure they never experience one drop of human kindness. Make sure their babies are stolen from them. Make sure their beaks are sliced off, their horns are cut off, and their testicles ripped out. Make sure there's a knife in their throat every second of every day for eternity. I really hope you'll make the right choice. I want to wrap this speech up so we can do our Q&A session. Give me about six more minutes to say something on the dairy industry as it pertains directly to cows. We talked about the pus in cow milk, which is gross. We talked about the unhealthiness of consuming dairy products, but we have yet to focus on what the cows are going through. Keep in mind, veganism isn't about your health. That would be selfish. I'm trying to get people to be unselfish for a change. To be altruistic. Do something kind for somebody else. And when you do that, don't expect something in return. But when it comes to cruelty, I think there's more cruelty in a glass of milk than a steak. 
And I want to make my case visually and verbally. You're only the 11th class to see what I'm about to show. Because this just went down a few months ago in Plain City, Ohio at a mom pa dairy farm. This is not an isolated incident. Don't for one minute think that this is an isolated incident. This is how slaves are treated. You don't really think that slaves get treated nicely, do you? You really think white people were nice when they shipped black people over here on ships? You don't think Nazis were nice when they walked Jews and gypsies into the gas chambers, do you? And this happens because you want to buy those products. Yeah, that guy's a scumbag for doing that. But he's doing that because you want to eat what comes out of her body. And enough already. You're not a caveman and you're not a cave woman anymore. Stop acting like Neanderthals. This is 2010. Give it up. It's not cute and it's not funny because animals are being abused. It is not your right 
It is not your freedom to do this to them. You don't get to have freedom when somebody else does it. That's a violation. And if you wonder why vegans get so upset sometimes, like I am right now, you just saw some of it. Every time we show up at a farm, somebody's punching, kicking, and stabbing somebody. And something else that I'm curious about, how come when I show videos like this of people punching and kicking animals, people are more upset with that than when they shove a knife in their throat? So even if you find a farm where they're not punching and kicking, when they shove a knife in their throat or put a bullet between their eyes, how is that not cruelty? Did you know that 90% of hamburger meat in America comes from the dairy industry? When cows no longer give huge amounts of milk after three to seven years, slaughterhouse, no exceptions. If ever given a chance, cows can live to be 18 to 25. And cows are like all female mammals. I am not trying to talk down to you when I speak about animal issues. It's just that people don't think that animals go through the same things, the same emotions that you go through, that we all go through. In order for a female mammal to give, to give milk, she has to be pregnant. Every year, every cow on every dairy farm is raped. A long steel device shoved in their vaginas to inject them with bull semen, or sometimes they use a bare hand. This forces the milk flow. And after she gives birth, babies are stolen. <coughs> and let me tell you something, the worst scream I have ever heard, and I've heard them all firsthand, when I started finding out about this stuff, a little over 15 years ago, I was like everybody else. I didn't believe it was that bad. I thought everybody was exaggerating. But unlike everybody else who just blows it aside, brushes it off, I actually went to see what was going on. I spent six weeks at Thorn Apple Valley Pig Slaughterhouse in Detroit, 1993. I broke into animal research laboratories. I broke into fur farms. I went behind the scenes of every circus and every rodeo that ever came through Michigan. Worst scream I have ever heard. A mother cow on a dairy farm. As she screams and bellows her lungs out day after day for her stolen baby to be given back to her. And I can only imagine the same scream every woman in this room would make if somebody held you down after birth and stole your newborn baby from you. And why did they take babies away from their mom? Well, the dairy industry can't have little babies sucking up all that milk that was meant for them when they'd rather sell it to you instead. Every time you have a glass of cow milk, some calf is not. And mother cows make milk for one reason anyways. During Q&A we're about to have, you can ask me whatever you want. I'm no politician. Bring up anything. If you went online before I got here, saw my radical essays that got me kicked out of countries, bring them up. There is one question. I will not entertain them. You cannot ask me why cows make milk. Thus, if it's good for us, shouldn't we be feeding it to our kids, Gary? Shouldn't we be having it? Nature took care of this one at the beginning of time. Cows make milk for their babies and for their babies alone. Case is closed forever. Permanently, no debate, no discussion. They don't make milk for baby elephants, baby orangutans, baby hedgehogs, baby rabbits, baby rats, baby humans, adolescent humans, or adult humans. This body of ours has absolutely no need for cow milk, like it has absolutely no need for giraffe milk. And zebra milk, and rhinoceros milk, hippopotamus milk, camel milk, deer milk, antelope milk, horse milk, pig milk, dog milk, or cat milk. The only milk that we ever need is our own mother's breast milk when we're born. That's it. And when we're done weaning, we never need one drop of milk ever again. No species on this planet needs milk after they're done weaning. But if you want to include some kind of milk in your diet like I do, let me reiterate the good news. Soy milk, rice milk, almond milk, hemp milk, coconut milk, oat milk, hazelnut milk. I promise you will like one of those seven vegan milks. Remember, when you go veg, you don't give up anything. You got the vegan version of stuff, or eat things that are truly natural, like fruits and vegetables, beans and lentils and seeds. I want to thank everybody for listening with an open mind. I do appreciate that.